Well, we'd like to um, uh, welcome you all here again tonight on the second last lesson of our study in Joshua. And I hope it's been as good a series for you as it has been for me. I, I really enjoyed this and some great biblical depths in the study. And as we follow this, we will uh, follow the same procedure that we watch the video and then go into discussion afterwards. Um, I wanted to say to especially to uh, those that we do know that are watching, those that we don't might not know that's watching this, um, please mm -hmm. let us know. Um, you can send me a, a text to 714-474-4673 and let me know but for um, Andrew as he travels around we know that you watch this and we pray for your blessing God's blessing on your ministry and then for Robin and for Jack um, we want to know you know that we miss you we would rather have you here but we're glad you're following us online and, and we'll be praying for you let's just open in prayer Lord Jesus, we thank you for your special touch on our lives. We thank you for your love, for your, your commitment, for your unfailing love, Lord, that you just stick with us through thick and thin. Thank you, Lord. And we pray that as we go into the study that your Holy Spirit will speak to us and will challenge us afresh. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. seasons are more intense than others and that's the rhythm of our relationship with God and for all these sessions we've been seeing movement as the people of God are possessing the land that God has promised them but eventually they take the last city and I love the phrase that comes at the end of this section in chapter 11 and this is down towards the end of that chapter it says at that time Joshua went and destroyed the Anakites from all the hill country Joshua totally destroyed them and their towns. No Anakites were left in Israel territory. Only in Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod did any survive. Put a little asterisk by that. We're going to come back to it in just a minute. So Joshua took the entire land just as the Lord had directed Moses. And he gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to their tribal divisions. Then the land had rest from war. That was the goal. The goal wasn't that these people just fight every day uh, for the rest of their lives. The goal was that they possess the land, and that was going to take a fight. Not just one fight, not two fights, not three fights, not five fights. It was going to take a season of possessing. But the goal all along was that they would, in fact, dwell in the land, and they would have rest in the land. That's kind of the rhythm of life with God. Six days he labored and on the seventh day God rested for us. Six days we labor and on the Sabbath day we rest from our labors and remember what God has done. For Joshua it was quite the adventure of taking all these different cities but then there was rest and the, the difficulty is that we sometimes confuse rest with comfort. And God isn't asking them to get comfortable in the land. He's giving them rest in the land. And he wants us to understand the difference in our own lives of those two things. Rest is pausing to remember the faithfulness of God. 
It's being alert to what God has done for us and being grateful for the way that he's worked in our lives. Our church is coming up on a season we call our Sabbath break. It's a little bit unorthodox. I don't know if anyone else does it. Maybe they do. But for two Sundays every year, we do not meet corporately as a church. I know somebody's got to struggle with that. They're like, we should meet every single week corporately. But we're still a church during the weeks that we don't corporately meet. We just don't come and show up to our locations. We give our door holders a break on those Sundays and a moment of rest. And the big idea is that that we want our church to very tangibly remember that it is God who is doing the work. So we pause or stop, as we say. We rest and we remember. And that's where the people of God were. Now is a time of rest. Don't want you to get comfortable. See, rest is remembering what God has done. Comfort is beginning to put our confidence in what we can do. And God didn't want the people to lose their edge. He didn't want them to lose the holy ground. He didn't want them to remember the the commander of the army of God. He didn't want them to not be set apart. He didn't want them to know that I've given you everything you need for your provision. You till the ground and you will have all you need, you and your family. He didn't want them to forget about the altar that showed his faithfulness. He didn't want them to forget about the commandment of Moses and all the word of truth that God had given them. He just wanted them to know in this season, you can rest and remember the faithfulness of God. But it's possible that they got comfortable because occasionally they would drift right back to the same doubt. How are we going to cross this river? The same temptation. That road looks good. Those coins look really good. No one will know if I bury them in my tent. They had a temptation to turn to the right because, hey, look, there's a whole different way to the right or maybe to to go to the left because somebody else was going to the left and that seemed to be working out good. And God was saying, don't get comfortable in the rest. And he wants to give you rest today. Maybe that's a word for someone coming close to the end of this journey we've been on is that maybe you've just been pushing and toiling and straining and struggling and striving and God's just saying, you know what? It's time for you just to take a deep breath and just soak in the faithfulness of God and remember what God has done. And then Joshua, coming to the end, if we fast forward a little bit to chapter 23, Joshua realizes that his time is almost done. And he calls the people together and does what every great leader would do. But before that, he's reminding them all the way up, Stay vigilant, stay alert, and stay ready. I thought it was interesting that God made a notation here that all the Anakites were destroyed, except some were left in Gath and some in Ashdod. And I don't know if you remember or not, but there was a big giant who came from Gath. Do you remember him? He was nine feet tall, and he taunted the armies of Israel, and he was a pain in their side for a long, long time. His name was Goliath, and he was one of the ones that his ancestors were still remaining, even after the land was possessed. What does that mean to you today? What does it mean to me today? It means that you just can't sit back and take the easy way out. You can't slip into a mindset of comfort because, I don't know, sin is still real. The enemy is still real. We are still in a spiritual battle. And if we don't stay vigilant, a lot of times these ancestors show up in our story a few years later. And they're nine feet tall and they look pretty intimidating to you and me. It's like the story I've often told about... David and Goliath, when I was a kid going to summer camp or youth conference, that that was a good message to preach to a room full of teenagers because it was like this little skinny teenage boy, David, he shows up and with five smooth stones and a sling, he takes down this nine foot Goliath. You can take down the giants in your life too. And you're like, yeah. And everybody's out scouring the campsite that night. We all got our five stones and brought them back to the service the next night at camp and consecrated them on the altar. We're like, I'm never going to struggle with that sin again. But that was when we were 15 and 14 and 12. And a lot of us are 23 and 47 and 61. And we're still struggling with that same thing that we were struggling with all the way back at summer camp when we thought we were the ones who had to take down 
the giants. Joshua wanted to make sure the people knew at the end of his life that it was God yes. who was fighting for them. And that's what he wants you and me to know tonight. He's not sending you into the promised land to go and fight all the enemies. He is the one who takes down all the Anakites and all of those who remain in Gath and in Gath and in Ashdod. He, through the person of Jesus, takes down all the giants. Joshua gathered the people and he gathered them together and he said, be strong just like he did at the very beginning and be careful to obey all that is written in the book of the law of Moses do not turn aside to the right or to the left and then he says a few verses later the Lord has driven out before you great and powerful nations and to this day no one has been able to withstand you and then a little bit later now I am about to go the way of all the earth you know with all your heart and soul that not one of all the good promises the Lord your God gave yes. you has failed. Every promise yes. has been fulfilled and not one yes. has failed. Yes. This is all pointing to Jesus, the one who ultimately is going to come into this same promised land, be born into the same promised land, going to live a perfect life in this same promised land, going to give his life in this promised land, going to substitute his innocence for our guilt in this promised land, is going to be the final sacrifice for the sins of the world in this promised land. God wasn't just sending people across a river to have a new place to live. God was opening a way for salvation to come to you and me. I, I mentioned earlier a few sessions back that a few months ago we were in Israel and every time we're in Israel we love to take people to the promised land to these very same places that we're reading about yes. and we were standing in the valley of Allah and that's that same place where the yes. remnant of the Anakites from Gath yes. Goliath intimidated the army of Israel and David this young boy does walk out but he walks out in the spirit of Joshua. He walks out strong and courageous. He walks out being, I've lingered at the tent of meeting and I've lingered in the presence of God. And I don't know what all y'all are scared of, but I know that my God is way bigger than this giant. And you're gonna need to have that confidence today as you cross your rivers into what God is leading you into and what he's promising you. You're going to need to stand in front of insurmountable odds and say, that's a lot, but yes. God is more. That's challenging, yes. but God is greater. I don't know if I personally have what it takes, but I do know God has what it takes. I have my own little 12 stones stacked at my house where I see it every single day. It's just one little stone. But I picked it up in the Valley of Allah. It looks like a good size one that would take down a nine foot giant. And every morning I see it as a remembrance to me of what David knew and what God wants you to know today. And that is that you're not the one who has to do all the fighting. You just have to show up with courage and with strength and confidence in what God can do. You just have to show up and surrender your life to God and say, I trust in you to do what I can't do. And I have a feeling that there's some of those descendants, the ones that remained in the other areas, showing up in your story today. And some of them are nine feet tall and some of them are 90 feet tall. Some of them have been with you for nine weeks and some of them have been with you for nine years. And today's the day that you need to hear what Joshua is saying as he's passing the baton to you and saying God has fulfilled every promise. And you know how he fulfilled them? He fulfilled them all through the person of Jesus Christ. And he's available to you today. He is your promised land today. He is the power today. He is the Ark of the Covenant in the middle of the river holding back the tide. He is the provision that is going to sustain you and nourish you every single day. And he is the one who's got the power yes. that you and I, in and of ourselves, 
do not have. I encourage you today to put your trust in Him and to continue to focus on the simple reality. Don't turn away from God's Word and don't lose hope and confidence in God's ability even in the midst of your inability and the circumstances that surround you. There is a lot of ground still to be taken for you, for your marriage, your family, for your future, for your dreams, for your city, for your people, for your nation, for your campus. There is ground to be taken today, and God is choosing you to walk into the future and into the promise, knowing with confidence he fulfills everything that he's promised you to do if you will stay obedient to him. All right, I'm going to start the discussion by saying, I'm going to just open it up. What spoke to you out of this? The difference between rest and comfort. Rest and comfort, yes. And what is the difference? What did you get from it? That, uh, well, you know, if you're resting, probably should be like a cat and sleep with one eye open and have your ears at attention. But you should be able, rest is relaxing and enjoying the, uh, the fruits of your labor but always keeping your eyes on God because if you get too comfortable with your uh, what you have done, uh, you have a tendency to take your eyes off God and all of a sudden it just might disappear on you. And I do appreciate the fact that uh, some of those giants got away because God had a plan for them too. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, yeah, God did a good job on this one. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, Anybody else? Well, I, I came, we came in on the, the one half of it. But when he mentioned rest, I, I thought, <clears throat> in he, Hebrews, the 12th chapter, it says, there remaineth a rest mm -hmm. in every situation. I don't know. Was this David in this circumstances? Was this David was in the circumstances and needed to rest? Or Joshua, who was it? Uh, Joshua was the, the, the tribe were the ones that would were, were to rest. Mm -hmm. uh, David was because they did not quite fulfill the word of God in their battle. Okay. And they left some things undone that David faced Goliath. So they entered a place of unrest because they didn't trust God. Um, I thought when jo in Joshua, um, he told Joshua in 1 and 8, uh, stand still. He said, told him to be not afraid and to stand still and see the... Uh, so I'm trying to bring it to us. And the Bible tells us, there remaineth a rest to the people of God. And quietness and confidence shall be our strength. Yeah. So even in the midst of all the stuff going on, there's a rest in him. I, I experienced that rest uh, many times. My, my story is too long to tell. <clears throat> but I found God to, to rest in, to trust in yes. when I didn't see or I didn't know. Yes. You know, I'm going to stop at that. No, that, that's a good point. Let me, let me ask another question to the group. What are things that can disturb our rest? Or ego. <laughs> and I'm going to touch on that now. My dad, I've got that one. Yes, our ego. No emotions. Yeah. Unbelief. Unbelief. Fear. Mm -hmm. Remember last week, from the study of last week, where we said that um, God's day does not start first thing in the morning, it, start, it starts when we go to bed at night. And if we trust God that He's working while we're sleeping, that's going to help us in our rest, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That will help us not to wake up at night mm -hmm. fearing and worrying about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 
I've woken up at night worrying about tomorrow. But I have, I have, especially when I was a programmer and I was, I was writing a difficult program and I couldn't get that the solution I needed to make it work. Mm -hmm. I've woken up at night and found the solution <laughs> because I'm not really resting. My mind was still on it, mm -hmm. and I th I'm thankful that the solution came. But but aren't we like that with God and our rest? I think all of us could we can get to a place of uh, uh, you know when things come um, if we don't have something to defend the Word of God, faith to defend. Yeah. Everything, everyone in here, every person exists, uh, have trials, things coming at us. No one's exempt. But how we sustain as we rest and we trust God. Everyone has stuff, right? Yes. So, but it's through Him that we care. It's about the power of them. Not in a, not in, ooh, I remember when I was young, um, growing up. And I was get, just getting to know God. And so when my sister would bother me, I'm like, well, what am I going to do this today? I'm not going to, you know, I was trying to do it in my own strength. I'm not going to let her bother me today. You know, I can just bear down. It didn't work because it was in my own strength. I was trying to do it outside of God. I knew about God. I was coming into the knowledge of the truth. And so, yeah, I'm, I was, I'm like, I'm going to be chairman. I'm not going to fuss with her today. And she will push me. I'm like, yeah. whoa. <laughs> I'm just, I think I'm we could think of a little bit farther, too. Uh, mm -hmm. When we say the word rest, mm -hmm. uh, I think sometimes we have a tendency to confuse that with the word sleep. And when you sleep, mm -hmm. uh, you are totally unconscious about anything that's going on about you. You become, you're rather in a uh, isolated place rather uh, you're insulated from the world so to speak for a while mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm sorry Go ahead. Okay. there was a story about a little guy in the Sunday school class with the teacher in the lesson mm -hmm. about um, don't uh, if you have enemies God will take care of them uh, it said you must love your enemy mm -hmm. and the little boy was battling with a guy that had been bullying him he says, I'm going to love him so much that he'll burn up. <laughs> Do you think it got the message right? I don't quite think it, but do we trust God? Do we trust that when we wake up in the morning that things are different? Because God's been at work? I think we can get to that place. Because many times you're, you're going to always have something. Yes. But I can say that there's times when I, you know, walked through stuff and didn't see. And you talked about the rest. I'm, it's a, the rest and sleep is different from the rest as it relates to depending on God. Rest, you know. And just recently we was walking through some stuff. And I didn't get the release of it, right? I'm like, okay, God, what? You know how you get to that. Everybody got to that, right? But then God, God brought a rest. I didn't have no more worry. I didn't have no more concern, but at first I was concerned, I, you know, I had to get to that place where I submitted to God. I wanted to find out first, is this His will? You know how you want to, okay, yeah. God, is this your will right here? If this is your will, He'll give us the grace to walk through it and all of that. And right now I can say that I have that rest. At first I didn't, I was like, mm, I don't know, right? And I think all of us can have that, because on a daily basis we Correct. encounter stuff. Family, children, giants, giants, yeah, all of us, and it's up to us to relinquish and let the Holy Spirit allow the rest and peace of God to abide. Because the devil, he's like, I'm gonna leave them people alone. They good. No, he ain't gonna say that. I'm gonna not bother them for a week. They, you know, no. He come at us all. Yes. His purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. He, he left him for a season. Yes. Remember with Jesus with the yes. temptation. Yes. yes. Another thing, coming back to what you said about ego earlier, mm -hmm. um, there's God's perfect will for our lives and there's His permissive will for our lives. Mm -hmm. 
His perfect will is when we rest completely and leave it in God's hands. Mm -hmm. He's got it all worked out. Mm -hmm. His permissive will is when we still trying to sort it out, our ego gets in the way, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. and, and we think, yeah, but you've got to do this, God, and we start doing things that interfere with His perfect will. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean that God's will does not get done? No, but it's more difficult. Um, God's perfect will was for the Israelites to completely um, destroy that tribe of what was a Gath, I think that they mentioned, that Goliath came from. They didn't. Mm -hmm. And because of that, there was a permissive world where David had to fight Goliath. Mm -hmm. That wasn't originally part of the plan. Mm -hmm. If they had to obey God and surrender it all. Mm -hmm. And in our own lives, and in my life, there's times where I have done things that has caused problems further on in my life that I might not have had to have faced if I'd been obedient to God and I'd rested in His perfect will mm -hmm. and trusted Him. I think everybody has a certain level of belief. Because my husband and I were talking about yesterday when we went to the doctor. I went to the grocery store. We had so, so much you know, money that we spent. And I told him, I said, we don't, I don't worry because... Uh, he'll provide whatever happens that day, he'll provide. I never worry about what's going to happen tomorrow or what if this doesn't work or nothing. I just get up in the morning, say my prayers, and leave it up to him. Because we have to face whatever comes our way. Mm -hmm. That's just our life, you know. Mm -hmm. But is he understanding it? Are we going to leave it in his hands or are we going to be thinking about all these things that are going to go wrong? Mm -hmm. And so my husband said, because he used to be a little bit negative in that area. I just got more positive because it's, that's our level of belief. Do we believe that's that true. he's going to take care of us? Or we sort of believe he's going to take care of us and then still have that doubt. Yeah. And now when we become complacent, we lose sight of God, we lose sight of ourselves, we lose sight of everything. That's when we just don't care. And when that happens, then all the things that come at us, we can't handle because we don't have our spiritual life with right. us to help right. us through it. That is so true. So, Brenda and I... <clears throat> When we came to America, I was in my 40s already. I basically had to start from scratch again. I had no no savings to work with. I had no pension fund, no nothing. I, I had to start from scratch. Um, my idea was trust God, but I've got to do this to make it work. Mm -hmm. There was a pendulum there. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, as I was working, I'm going to have to work until I'm about 70 before I retire to have sufficient money for me to, to be able to retire on it. That was my thought. At 64, um, circumstances changed, and thanks to COVID, I was forced into the retirement world long before I was ready for it. Mm -hmm. But God knew that was going to happen, and the plans were there. And it's a, I can see miracle after miracle that's happened in the last three years, four years. Mm -hmm. But it's not what I thought, and it wasn't what I was planning or, or, or contemplating my future and figuring out what I needed to do. And yes, we need to do. Let, let's just get one thing right. <clears throat> we need to take care of our future. We need to have life insurance policies, um, so that if, uh, if something happens to me that Brenda's okay, you know, etc, etc. I believe God expects us to be responsible. That's true. You know? But that doesn't mean we say it's all us. We must realize that God knows what's going on and He's in control of things as well. And I wasn't where I thought I needed to be, and still not where I thought I needed to be, but God is. Yes. God is where I need, need to be. Mm -hmm. and, and it's been a miracle watching my life as I retired, and, and how God has been taking place, uh, taking care of that. Mm -hmm. It was God that took down the giants. That's what we've got to remember, and that's what 
what Israel had to remember in a time of rest, it wasn't them that took down the giants. Mm -hmm. It wasn't their obedience, it wasn't their fight, and they had gone through a lot of war and fighting and that, and their sacrifice. It was God that took down the giants. So it really depends on, uh, uh, I'm going to go out in the weeds here again, but uh, how do you uh, interpret things? It's, you know, if we interpreted David uh, beating Goliath and it was all due to David, then we've interpreted that wrong. Yes. So we need to keep the God part That's true. in the center of the line. Mm -hmm. Correct. And these other little things on the sidelines where they belong. That is so true. If David had not, <coughs> and as you mentioned now, if David's relationship with God was not that strong, mm -hmm. and from years of trusting God, from years of speaking to Him, of singing to him. There might not have been a rock big enough. <laughs> <laughs> no. mm -hmm. well, I, I'm sorry. Carry on, please. I was going to say, uh, I strongly believe that God has a plan for each, each one of us. It might not be the same plan, but it's, you know, like in, in a couple and I guess, it seems to work out somehow along the way so that he plans our lives. But sometimes we have to make decisions over what we want to make. Because we want to take the easy way out, but the easy way out may not be what God has planned for us. Correct. And Correct. you see that in the Bible a lot of times, God wanted them to do certain things and they, you know, with different people, but they didn't want to do that because if, you know, if they had done what it asked, they wouldn't have gone through all the trials and tribulations that they had. That's true. But they didn't. Yes. And the easy way out led to deception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As we saw in previous studies, where people deceived them about who they were and because they wanted to take the easy way out, they just took it for granted and mm -hmm. didn't go in and do some work on that. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. I had a knock on my door tonight. And it was a guy from some roofing company. Uh, just damaged my tiles and that from the storms and so forth. He says, um, I will go up there do a report and send it, everything to your insurance company and everything will work it out. Now, that would be great, that's the easy way out. I had a guy come a month ago say the same thing to me. And I went and after, I, I said, no, hang on. Don't get pushed into something. Let's just, let's just understand something. Don't get rushed into something. Mm -hmm. Pray, think about it. And I said, I need to do some thought on this. I said, I'll come back to you. And then I went and looked this company up. And the Better Business Bureau, they get about four complaints a week about this company. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'd rushed into it, mm -hmm. now I get another one today and I said to him, I'm not ready to rush. He said, I'll go now onto your roof and give you the, everything I'll be done. I said, I have a, a meeting at 6 o'clock, and that was about just after 5. I said, I can't do it. So he says, but you've got to do it. The time's going to run. I said, no, I'm not ready now. <laughs> and he left. He left, okay? The only time that's running out is that he needs a little money. To yes, correct. Yes, yes, <laughs> correct. So but isn't that how the devil... Mm -hmm. um, we talk about people being led astray, mm -hmm. people, you know... The devil is a master at that, mm -hmm. in making us think different. If, if the devil is, yes, he wants us to sin, I mean that is part of it, but his biggest thing is if he can get us to doubt the Word of God, That's true. and start thinking, and going away from God's will, he's one. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says we err because we know not the Word of God. Remember how Jesus fought it. He fought the temptations with God's word mm -hmm. all the way. Mm -hmm. And as you said earlier, um, the devil left him mm -hmm. for a time, for mm -hmm. a season. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean he was finished. He came back again. Mm -hmm. But we've got to trust God. And, and 
It's God that takes down the giants. That's right. And we've got to trust that. Yes. God has got a perfect world for our lives. Perfect. And if we had to find that perfect will and rest in God, man, your life will be, <laughs> be so much different to what yes. it is. The majority of us, the majority are in His permissive will in that we do things outside of God's will, but outside of what God's telling us. Mm -hmm. God still goes ahead and helps us through, but life is so much tougher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true. I think sometimes we concentrate on the bad, like the word of concentrating on the giants instead of concentrating on God's, you know, pulling them through it. Right. So sometimes I believe that in our mind, instead of depending or trusting God, we tend to concentrate whatever is ailing us or attacking us. And that's how the devil can work through us. So we don't give him the power if he doesn't have the strength. That's so, true. Remember when we spoke about the young in the new generation crossing the Jordan River? And we said, but they had, they had the stories from their parents and that of the Red Sea, how it parted and that. Mm -hmm. the pro I think the problem there, they were looking at what the parents did and not what God did. Mm. If they could have seen the mighty God that yes. parted the Red Sea, yes. it would have been easier for them to trust the mighty God to mm -hmm. take them through the Jordan. Mm -hmm. You know, that's also true. They might have, when the stories were being told, passed down the generation to generation, uh, they might not have uh, uh, given all of the information. Yes. They might have misconstrued some of the information. Mm -hmm. So it's some of the stuff that God, all the things that God did and God does, mm -hmm. uh, don't become relevant mm -hmm. when the story is told. It takes on its own little, uh, uh, probably the best word for it is epic or tale. Mm -hmm. When we sit at somebody's memorial service or at the funeral of a, of a mighty man of God, does God get all the glory? Or does that man get some of the glory? Uh, just a okay. question. Just a question. Mm -hmm. I think that question probably when we answer that is more than likely going to be that uh, we give a lot, most of the credit to the individual and not to God. Just because I think we're, we become emotional because we want to remember that person yeah. that way. Isn't it in order, though? It's not like you're taking God's glory, but you're talking about this person, what the accomplishments are, how, what they did, you know, when they die. Yes. And it doesn't mean that... Y'all help me on this. It doesn't mean that you're taking the glory from God. You're just recognizing this guy's life. No, I don't think we're taking it. I don't think we give God enough credit. Okay. I, I don't think we, we glorify okay. God enough. Mm -hmm. Depends okay. on the presentation of the person that, you know, is doing the service or mm -hmm. with the family. Okay. Because some families tend to be more concentrating on the individual than mm -hmm. they are what God has done for that person. Okay. Person's life. Okay. I have to give a eulogy on Saturday for a good friend of mine that passed away. Mm -hmm. A man of God. One that I love. I loved him dearly. But this is speaking to me tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm saying in that eulogy, make sure I give God the glory. Yes. And not that leave them just thinking of the man. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I, I'm getting at. And that helps those coming along. Mm -hmm. You say, I wish I was, the, not to say I wish I was like my father, to, and I could also do that, could that. I wish I was like my father, that I trusted God more, that could God is in charge. Mm -hmm. Does that make a difference? Yeah, it does. You know, nowadays we have the um, differences of opinions, because nowadays they don't even have funerals. A lot of times they just cremate them and... Afterwards, they do whatever it is they're going to do. Mm -hmm. So, 
In fact, the spiritual sense of the individual and our family get together and all that is kind of mm -hmm. lost. Mm -hmm. And so, and now they don't consider like that something that, not like something that we used to in the old days we're worried about, you know, mm -hmm. family gone, the family left behind and all that. It's just like, mm -hmm. they're gone now, you know, it's time to get done with them, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. the uh, perfection or whatever you want, a compassion, mm -hmm. it's not the same as it was like in my days when I was younger, it was a different, you know, they celebrated differently or like mm -hmm. funerals or anything like that. But now mm -hmm. it's like, like when my mother passed away, my mom was at the point where she could not concentrate on her life anymore, so she told me she didn't want anybody to cry. And so they dressed her in red, which my mother didn't like, you know, mm -hmm. but they did what they wanted mm -hmm. because that's what their idea thought of my mom was. And then they were all laughing and having a good time. And because mom had said, I want you guys to cry, but she didn't mean, you know, don't cry because I'm gone. She just mm -hmm. meant to make a big issue out of it, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm going to go to God. And that's what her thing was, mm -hmm. just going to heaven. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the individuals that are left behind. Mm -hmm. You know, because some of us that's were true. more hurt by her being gone, and others were like, you know, whatever. And mm -hmm. it's just a whole different... There's a lot of attitude of, yeah. of when somebody dies in this day and age of, uh, it's kind of like uh, cleaning out a room. Mm -hmm. Sweep it clean and uh, repaint the walls and sell it and let's get on. I, I was just thinking, you, you she make the statement, I remember one time I went to a funeral and in the words, the guy had made his transition. And I was thinking about, now y'all help me on this, you know, he, it was time to speak to the living. He, you yes. know, yes. I, I, I don't know, sometimes we, we put everyone in heaven. You know, I'm t you, you, you know, I'm, t I'm not trying to be mean and nothing like that. That we don't know. Yeah, this, yeah. And so, I, I had to make comments in this funeral. So I started talking because I said, this guy has made his exit. He had, you know, lived his life, you know, and then I, I was steering away from things I couldn't, I didn't want to, but you, you made the point in your speaking to, uh, at, doing the eulogy, giving God the glory, of course, but the fact that this guy had already into, you know, he's gone. Yes. And I think it is important to give God the glory, but also to speak to the living. Yes, I agree with you. I was telling the people, we all going to go that way, but where will we spend eternity? You know, and um, just, it was on my mind to, to tell them, oh, if we die now, if I die now, where would I spend eternity? What kind of, you know, so that's what I was thinking in that terms, you know. And I agree with you. So my, my, my main point on my eulogy about mm -hmm. this friend of mine, mm -hmm. I was saying earlier to them, he had a Toyota Camry mm -hmm. that on the same engine he did over 500,000 miles mm -hmm. without the engine having to be swapped out or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's amazing to get that in a car today. Sure I want to use that thought to saying Ron had been given a certain time mm -hmm. in his life mm -hmm. and in that time of that engine he was obedient to God and God worked through him. Yes. And he trusted God and God mm -hmm. worked through him. Mm -hmm. So my mind is wrapped around that because we are talking to the next generation. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for pastors to date it do funerals. It's, it's okay when they know the person's a Christian. But they often are asked to do funerals for people they don't even know. Oh, yeah, how do you tell me? It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. All right. So, that brings to mind a question yeah. that I have. And I, I've lost a lot of friends over the years, close friends, parents, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the go, you go to the service, and uh, the sermon is given, and the, the eulogy given, mm -hmm. and you put that person in the ground, 
and you walk away from that and you wonder, did they really go to heaven? You know, it's it. it, uh, you, it we we seem to get married and we get buried in a church. Mm-hmm. A lot, a lot goes on in between. And then when the post is ready, and it's post time at the race, did we, did he go to heaven? Yeah. In some cases we won't know. How do we know? Yeah. No. And let me let me. That, so that leaves a doubt on, on my part about how sincere some of these faiths are. So the only thing we can do, as was said just now, is challenge those that are still alive mm-hmm. to make sure that they are ready to go. Mm -hmm. We're not sure, but we try and challenge the next group to make sure. That's true. Uh, Because we don't know. Yeah. And we're not going to, when we get to heaven one day, we're not going to know who made it and who didn't make it. You see, the Bible does state that not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom Mm -hmm. of God. That's true. And so, all we can do is try to stay on the straight path and not get sidetracked. Mm-hmm. And the thing is that we have to believe that God exists, even though we don't think we have to believe that He exists, because if we just talk about God and we mm-hmm. don't really believe that He exists, mm-hmm. then we're kind of putting ourselves in, in jeopardy because we have to believe. There's a difference between reading and writing mm-hmm. and believing. And if you believe in something, even if you don't see it, you believe mm-hmm. it, you can feel it, whatever. But if we just don't truly believe and trust in God, we don't know. We don't know whether we're going to go to heaven. We're working towards going to heaven, but the rest is going to be up to how how we trust Him. Man how sees the inward him. or the outward part. God sees the in, inward part. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, God knows who's going to go to heaven. I want to wrap up on one last thought. I'm going mm-hmm. to move off that thought because our time's nearly yes. up. Can somebody read 1 Samuel 17, 1 to 7 for me, please? Samuel. No, no, sorry, I had the wrong one. Mm-hmm. Joshua chapter 11, verse 22 is the one I want. There was none of the Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel, only in Gaza, in Gath, or Gath and in Ashdod there remained. Mm-hmm. Okay. God... When, when Israel took the land, mm-hmm. they, God had told them, they conquered Jericho, they conquered Ai, mm-hmm. they conquered the southern cities, mm-hmm. they conquered the northern cities, they claimed the entire region except mm-hmm. for those few that remained in Gaza, Gath, and Asher. Mm-hmm. There were just a few, but there was a few that they never took care of. Mm-hmm. Because God told them to take them all. All right? Mm-hmm. Um, it may seem like a small thing, but Israel was clear. Their land was clear. It wasn't a small thing. Mm-hmm. Some nations were left after the conquest. But that, except, is significant and mm-hmm. would come back to bite God's people further down the line. Now, let me talk about um, Goliath. Let's reflect on the significance of Joshua's partial obedience Mm -hmm. in dealing with Gath. Goliath, the giant who was, and I'm sorry, this you won't find in your notes, some of you, and I'm sorry, I'll explain Mm -hmm. it just now. Mm -hmm. Goliath, the giant who was actively opposing Israel, Mm -hmm. hailed from Gath. That was one of the groups that was supposed to have been wiped out. What started in Joshua 11 as a minor infraction Mm -hmm. ballooned hundreds of years later into a formidable enemy that terrorized God's people. If you're familiar with the story, God's chosen King David defeated Goliath. The problem was dealt with, but not before it wrecked havoc in Israel. And you can read that in 1 Samuel chapter 17 you want to follow up that on your own as 1 Samuel 17 deals with this this area Mm -hmm. Joshua's partial obedience led to a bigger problem down the road for God's people a small step of partial obedience Mm -hmm. led to a big problem a few generations later Mm -hmm. 
even though God rescued them from Goliath, God's people still felt the negative effect of Joshua's disobedience. For the people of God, partial obedience can cause problems both for us and others. Mm -hmm. Jesus, like David, has overcome the giant problem for us, mm -hmm. but we can still feel the effects of our sin, mm -hmm. just as Israel was timid by Goliath. Mm -hmm. We did a study quite a, a, last year where we spoke about absolute truth versus relative truth. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happens when we don't go for absolute truth and we allow a certain relative truth to come in? We get sidetracked. Then we have a problem that has just been mentioned mm -hmm. and it causes problems down the road. Mm -hmm. You take the church today in how it started in the New Testament, mm -hmm. in how it started with um, early leaders like Martin Luther and others, mm -hmm. and where it is today, mm -hmm. it's a far cry from what God has, has, has wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Because we allow things to step in mm -hmm. that God did not want. That's true. And in our lives that can happen. And what we allow into our lives as, as partial things might not seem so big, mm -hmm. can be major problems in, in, in generations to come, of, of, of future generations from our side. Mm -hmm. We need to trust God. God is in control. God is at work when we sleep in. Mm -hmm. God's at work when we rest in. We can trust Him. We need to trust Him. And when God tells us to do something, do it. Mm -hmm. Don't try and work it out yourself, and don't try and figure it out yourself. God is in control. Yeah, don't try to rush anything. Because sometimes we get in a hurry and we want to rush things. We're thinking the world. Because I've been through a lot, and that's since June of 21. Mm -hmm. And I learned that I have to let go. Whatever it is, you know, pray for it. I have to let go. And to do that. Mm -hmm. yes. Because sometimes our mind starts working. You go, well, if I do this or if I do that, or blah, 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 blah. And in the end, we are sabotaging ourselves because we have no control over our lives. Mm -hmm. We control up to a certain amount, you know, like our daily lives, that kind of thing, we're planning. But if you notice sometimes we plan something, and the next day something else happens and it changes our whole plan. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it just works that way. Because I'm a planner, I plan, but the next day something will change entirely that I have to go along with the full kind of thing and mm -hmm. that's how that's what we were talking about him and I the other day. We've gone through so much and we've gone through it with God's you know, trust in God. Mm -hmm. I think if we have been in a different kind of world because we were before, uh, our lives wouldn't be we wouldn't be together anymore. You know, our lives would be totally different. My husband might not even be here today because he almost passed away one time. And I almost passed away three or four times in the last year and a half. So you know Sometimes we just have to let go. Yeah. Correct. That's, That's the hardest thing to let go. It mm -hmm. is hard. And just think, yes. the times where we planned our future, we said, well, if I do this at the work, well, if I do this at work, at those times, we were, we were, were relying on the strength and the health we had then. Mm -hmm. We weren't thinking of, maybe I will not have this health at that time. Maybe I'll not have the strength at that time. Mm -hmm. God knows everything, not just today, but tomorrow and the future. That's and true. He's got it already planned out. That's true. That's so true. That's Any true. last thoughts before we close? Do you have any last thoughts? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to. I, 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 get it. I really appreciate uh, that verse there, 22. Mm -hmm. It was like God inserted a little check and balance system within uh, what they were doing. Yes. And they didn't bother to uh, really uh, look at that check. They liked what the balance was. They kind of got uh, comfortable in their rest. Mm -hmm. And it got away from them. Mm -hmm. 
I think deep down inside, that's what verse 22 to me means, is that they became comfortable in their rest. And in their victories, maybe. Yeah. How many times have we spoke about Joshua as a great leader, right? Mm-hmm. Twice in a row, he disobeyed God. Mm-hmm. And uh, they faced consequences because of that. Mm-hmm. What about not taking out the whole tribe of Gath? As a leader, he's responsible as well. That's true. So, we, the checks and balances are there. And mm-hmm. As Christians, we should always be checking with God that we're in His will. That is so true. We should, even of the victories, mm-hmm. great victories, remember what they said in that one study of ours? The praise on the mountaintop is important, mm-hmm. but the praise going down the mountain is more important. That's true. When we're feeling good and things work, that yeah. praise and that getting close to God and checking in with Him is more important. That's true. And we're asking Him to do it. That is so true. And we forget that. Sometimes we forget to give God His glory and we just that thing, yeah, I got this. And we don't realize that. We pull us through. Yes. Somehow we pull us through. That's the truth. Wonderful. Any requests for prayer? I don't know how Robin is doing. I have not seen her this week. I'm planning to try and get out there tomorrow because Friday we leave for um, California. Okay. So I'm trying mm-hmm. to get to see her tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. Is she at home? Yes. She's good. She's all right? She, um, so first of all, originally the thought was it was three discs they were going to fuse together. Mm-hmm. It ended up in nine. Nine discs that were fused together. Jesus. Wow. So it was a major, major operation. Um, as she would love to be here, but she knows she can't make it. Mm-hmm. And we're thankful that you are listening to us online, Robin, and we continue praying for you. Yes. And then also for Brenda and Paula and Roger. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we need to. This is Brenda. Mm-hmm. I, I'm planning to try. Robin, I'm hoping to see you tomorrow morning. I'll give you a call. Um, we're planning to get there and see them again. We need to continue trusting God for healing, but also being there for mm-hmm. the people that are That's being true. healed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Gentlemen, who can I ask to close and pray for us? <laughs> thank you. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you ever so much for this opportunity that we have to come together and study your word. We thank you for the people that are faithful to you, Lord, and those that can't make it to our study, Lord, we pray for them, that they too will mm-hmm. will view online the study in, in your word, Lord. Just be with each and every one of us. Be with Robin as she's going through the process of healing. Yes, God. Heal her completely, Lord. We know it's your will that she be able to walk again without any more pain. Be with Paula as she goes mm-hmm. through her yes, trials yes, yes. as well, Lord. Strengthen her. Give her the love that she needs. Yes, sir. Continue Roger. to be with Roger as he has mm-hmm. to deal with these problems. Yes. Strengthen him in your word, Lord. Mm-hmm. Wrap your loving arms around both of them. Yes. yes. Lord, we, Check. we just thank you for this, this time that we had to together tonight. Let us be completely obedient to your word, Lord, not just partially, yes, but completely God. obedient. Yes, God. And let us not fall into the temptations of the devil. Yes, God. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Lord, I pray also for Clarence and Kim and Vinnie and Lord, that you be with them and you bless them and you heal them with whatever issues they may have for I trust in you in Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Also, I just got a text from um, First Lady Stephanie that Sherry's husband, Jerry, is scheduled for a procedure tomorrow at 11. Mm -hmm. They are going to try to sh shock his heart. Please keep praying. Jerry, um, well, Sherry's yes, yeah, husband. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Was, did y'all know he was in the hospital? Yes, he was going for a procedure. Uh, um, aware of that. COPD. And so oh. he's in the hospital. He's going for, for a procedure in the morning. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the morning. I'm going to this. She just sent this. Yes. It's not the problem. And pray for our church. Pray for the leadership. Um, pray for our district. Yes. For the new district superintendent that's taking over in a few days' time, mm -hmm. and as he leads the church, um, let's just pray that God will give them wisdom and guidance as they yes. go along. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it for tonight. We trust you have a good week, and um, we're on our last study in Joshua next week. Mm -hmm. And. Um, then we're going to go into the book of Noah. Mm -hmm. Not Noah, sorry. Jonah, Jonah yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go into the book of Jonah. So, mm -hmm. please be in prayer. Trust God. Yes. Learn to trust God. He is there and He is in control. Yes. Have a good week. We'll see you next week. Yes,